Welcome back to the YouTube channel for BamaOnline.com. Travis Ryer, Senior Analyst for BOL alongside site publisher Tim Watts. Big news on the transfer portal front, Tim, as we learn Keon Sab, a safety from the University of Michigan, has revealed his intention to enroll at the University of Alabama. Yeah, it's my understanding he's going to be in, in classes this week sometime, that he came into that – now, there might be people with better actual terms for it, but I think there's some kind of mini semester that begins on February 12th. I think that's last Monday and lasts for a week to enroll. So there's a small window there. Um, so I'm expecting that he will be there in time for spring practice and, uh, you know, kind of a hotly talked about uh, uh, topic since he hit the portal on Friday because, you know, Alabama fans have been asking, when's that Michigan news coming? When's that Michigan news? And everybody's like, yeah, hey, it's probably going to be April. Well, here we are. And, um, you know, you know, hit the hit the portal at the last minute and um, before with Alabama's chances anyways, hit the portal at the last minute in that small window and um, just decided, I guess he didn't want to take visits. But he had a lot of attention from schools. Twenty plus, we're told, reached out the minute he hit the portal. So a very high interest guy. Yeah, the ongoing saga involving Jim Harbaugh and the NFL kind of extended or deferred that transfer window for the University of Michigan. And it really felt like UM was pretty much going to keep all of its guys, especially after promoting from within where Harbaugh's replacement is concerned. But you did have some changes to that defensive staff up in Ann Arbor. But Sab, a six foot one, 208 pound safety uh, in his second season with the Wolverines in 2023, he had six tackles in Michigan's national championship game win over the University of Washington. So college football in 2024, right, Tim? Keon yeah. Saab played against Alabama in the Rose Bowl last month, played against Kalen DeBoer in Washington in the national championship game, had six tackles against Washington in that national championship game, did Saab. Saab. And here we are. Now he's apparently going to be a member of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Well, we've seen that before with Jermaine Burton, right? Played yeah. Alabama National Championship game. Next week was enrolled in Tuscaloosa. So, yeah, I think I think the changes you alluded to at Michigan. I think at first they were able to keep everybody, but look, I don't know the timeline for the Mich Michigan coaching staff hires and everything, but I know there's a lot of surprise. I think Harbaugh took at last count at least five guys off that staff, um, and usually I judge it by the reaction of the fans. They seem pretty upset and surprised by that. I was told there was some trouble with the defensive back hiring or maybe they didn't get the guy they wanted initially or there was a delay. I don't know exactly. I think they've got their guy now, but I think that kind of put that doubt in there. And we saw the same thing on the Alabama end with Caleb Downs. I mean, when you sign with the school and everybody you know is gone, I mean, it, it kind of opens that door to possibly leaving. And because there's somewhere, you know, when you're a big time recruit like Keon and Caleb was somewhere there's a staff member you know <laughs> there's guys you know there's friends you know so yeah but to see this turn around so quick you know it's really interesting because his brothers were on campus not long ago Xavier and Amari Saab uh 26 and 27 recruits I believe uh loved it in Tuscaloosa so there's a familiarity there at least for the family Keon obviously wasn't on that visit but the family you know, the brothers, they were there and they could obviously fill in on how much they liked it and and um, and uh, give him some kind of review. Yeah. You know, you think about it. Alabama loses a safety to the Big Ten and Caleb Downs and now adds a safety from the Big Ten in Keon Sab. And you talk about familiarity and relationships, I guess, from the Alabama staff perspective, that's there, obviously, going back to Courtney Morgan's time at the University of Michigan. And then also Sab spent his senior season of high school football at IMG. So you look at the IMG connections too: Jihad Campbell, Tyler Booker, J.C. Latham. I'm guessing maybe that didn't hurt either. No, I think, you know, you know, I've always said that recruiting is relationships more than anything, getting people to trust you and and being good to them and delivering on your promises and being fair. So obviously Courtney Morgan, you know, it's kind of interesting because this was this is a his whole recruitment's interesting, committed to Clemson when Clemson never had a decommit. Uh, Venables gets the Oklahoma job, it's my understanding. So that opened up that door we're talking about. Uh, Courtney Morgan played a role in getting him to Michigan. I think that relationship was already established, even though he's expected to sign with Clemson at the time. Um, and obviously that relationship's still there because the parents are coming from New Jersey. 
bringing their, you know, their two of their sons to visit, hanging out in Tuscaloosa. So, yeah, I think, you know, and that's what we'd heard about Courtney Morgan, right? He's a relationship guy. And, um, he's going to have those kind of connections. He just reaches out, you know, seems like a pretty popular guy and easy to talk to. So I imagine there's a big brother vibe there as well in all of this. Yeah, you just never know if you're recruiting a guy for this period, this cycle, or maybe a year or two down the road with the transfer portal in play like it is in 2024. But, you know, also, this is an Alabama staff that I'm guessing had a great opportunity to evaluate Keon Sab. Yeah. Not that he was an under-the-radar prospect coming out of IMG, but Kalen DeBoer, Jamarcus Shepard, Nick Sheridan. You talk about Alabama staff members right now. The last time they coached a football game was against the University of Michigan. And Keon Sab started at safety for Michigan in that game. So offensive coaches for Alabama, I'm guessing, were certainly familiar, starting with the head coach, Kalen DeBoer, with what Sab could bring to the table. Yeah, and also, where did the defensive back coach come from Alabama? Wisconsin, right? So there's a lot of familiarity there with this with this guy. They didn't have to dig deep to scout him. You know, they knew – right away what they're doing. I'm, it's my understanding that Colin Hitchler did a really good job in a short time of selling what they were going to do as far as what they need from the defensive back position. And look, it's not a recruiting pitch. You can say we don't have a lot of experience here at Alabama. You can say that if you're a coach. There's not a lot of experience in the secondary. It's very talented, but it's not experience. So, again, when you get a guy like Saab to come in, you're getting that experience that you need back there to compete. You brought in Damani, who's another guy competing at cornerback. Those are guys that are talented, but they also got experience on the college program. So I think Colin gets a shout out. And also, I tell you, I was told it's very attractive, this swarm defense for Kane Womack. I mean, the safeties are, you know, they're kind of showcased in this. You get a lot of things to do. You get downhill, you play at the line, you play in um, – in coverage and you get a lot of chances to make plays and be seen. So I think all that combined between Courtney Kane, obviously Kalen DeBoer is going to play a factor, but, for, but, uh, but also for Hitchler, I think all that combined just kind of led that in the right direction. And again, you know, we're, I think most people expect Alabama to be a team that's going to compete next year. And uh, they did lose some guys in the portal. You know, you lost Isaiah Bond, but you brought in, you know, Jeremy Bernard, you know, you lost your center Seth and you brought in, Parker to replace him from Washington. So you're kind of kind of walking through that episode of Seinfeld where you lose a 20 and you get a 20. I think Kalen DeBoer just wants to be even Steven like that Seinfeld episode. You know, you lose a guy, you fill a guy in. But I think this is big on several reasons. Experience is the one that jumps out to me the most. I think that's big. This guy has played in a national championship game. He's played in as high profile college game as you can get. But also, I think you add talent to that roster, and, you know, it's a guy, obviously, the Alabama staff felt comfortable with. Yeah, you look at Alabama at the safety positions, yeah, you bring back Malachi Moore. That was a big retention item here in the offseason, no doubt about it, not just in terms of experience, but everything Malachi can do on the back end. But once you get beyond Malachi Moore, Devontae Smith, he's been in the program a while, but he's had some injury issues then you get really young, a couple of second-year guys, Bray Hubbard, Tony Mitchell, who I think you really like the upside for both those guys. Then you get into some true freshman types, some early enrollees, Peyton Woodyard, who we expect to be a great player for Alabama. Same for Red Morgan. Dre Kirkpatrick Jr. has some of those attributes that you look for in a versatile defensive back. So numbers are okay, but experience absolutely not at the level you would like. And with Sab. You talk about the four-two-five, and even though I didn't really see him play that star or that slot corner type of position, in a four-two-five, maybe he is a candidate for that position that has typically been more of a slot cover corner, but can be a safety linebacker type in Kane Womack's defense. So perhaps some versatility where his addition is concerned as well. Yeah, I talked to some college coaches who were more familiar with him than I was, and they they all thought he was a perfect fit for Womack. They're, they both knew Womack's system, and they knew um, of Saab, but they felt he was a perfect – because of what you said, the versatility. He can come in and play different positions. He's going to have an opportunity, too, which is the biggest thing. He's been battling with some pretty good players. Obviously, Michigan had a good secondary. They were very good defensively this year at every level. So, you know, I think he started five or six games for them. 
Um, but he, you know, he played in the biggest, you know, you play against a passing team and the SEC is going to have some teams that like to pass it. Right. So you get those guys, you get those opportunities and Hey, Michigan's defense was really good against the Washington offense. They had them bottled up most of the game, had Phoenix confused. And uh, I've seen a few of the highlights from that where Saab did have big plays in that game. Yeah, the expectation for Saab, this isn't a situation where he was sort of boxed out of a starting job no. potentially in 2024 at Michigan. There were folks that had penciled him in as a starter because in – Michigan's nickel package, he was pretty much a starter at safety. They would shift some guys around, uh, but you saw him start at safety against Washington in the national championship game. A guy who had a couple interceptions a year ago in Keon Sab, including a pick six against Minnesota. So kind of like Damani Jackson, right? Bring some pedigree, bring some experience to the safety position as Alabama's hoping Damani will do the same at corner. Anything else, Tim, before we wrap this one up? No, I think it's a nice little surprise for Alabama fans heading into April. I mean, to spring practice. Uh, I still, I'm really interested to see what happens in that that portal se- season in April. Ooh. I think it's going to be pretty wide open. I mean, there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of guys who are told stick through the spring because you're going to be a starter or have a chance to start. Who won't? There's going to be guys that. I mean, there's a lot of going <laughs> to. I'm not even sure what all if the coaching changes are done. My guess are no. Uh, I'm not talking Alabama, I'm talking nationally. So we could still see a lot of movement. And I think Alabama will be very active in the portal. They'll have a better feel for their staff. I mean, they're still figuring their, you know, their their uh, players out right now. Good stuff from Tim Watts, our site publisher there at BamaOnline.com. You should be there with us. BamaOnline.com, the roundtable, our premium message board there. You want to post up. You want all of this information as it breaks. That's where you're going to get it first the roundtable at BamaOnline.com. Also, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel right here, you need to do that right now. Just hit the subscribe button, turn on those notifications. You'll get all of our video content as it drops right here on the YouTube home for BOL. For Tim Watch, Travis Ryer, thanking you once again for joining us. Until next time, so long, everybody.